I exercise at least twice per day, once in the morning and once at night. And for me, exercise is one of the cornerstones of my mental health. Moving my body, doing the social aspects of it, learning a new skill, but getting, getting physical really helps my mental state. The endorphin release, the whole thing, I need it daily. So the question comes up is like, okay, well, how do you stay mentally strong? How do you protect your mental state if you have a physical injury? So I wanted to talk about that in this video, what I do and what I've seen work for other people. So just a little bit of a backstory. Every morning I will do a prehab, so that's like sort of shoulder strengthening and other things that help me to not get injured in the first place, along with like 30 minutes of yoga. So I'm doing a lot of prehab. I'm strengthening my body to make sure that I avoid injuries, or if I do, they're very much minimalized. And at night I do Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, which is a martial art, and that's like heavy contact, um, a lot of joint manipulation. So there is a decent amount of risk of injury, and I have injured myself that have put me off training for a while. So when that's happened, what I've done is a few things. Depending on the injury, you can sort of train around it. So if I've injured my arms or my shoulders or some sort of upper body thing, I can continue to run. I can do other options. If I injured my lower body, it's sort of weights and other sort of stuff, maybe swimming. So wherever possible, if you do sustain an injury, keep your body moving. Don't just use it as an excuse to stop. Because if you use it as an excuse to stop and not move your body at all, you're going to deteriorate. You want to keep doing something. It might not be what you're doing normally. Like if you're a bike rider and you, you know, break a foot, you're not going to be able to ride your bike. But what can you do, right? So, so think, think about stuff and actually just keep your body moving. Keep doing something. You'll be surprised when you start thinking about it, what you can and can't do depending on the injury. So let's suggest train around it. For me with my martial arts, I broke my hand, then I damaged the shoulder, then I broke my thumb. So that meant that I could only fight off my back and only with my legs. I was literally fighting and just practicing using my legs alone. So I was able to learn a specific part of my martial art. So when my body got back in order, when I was fully fine again, that I still had, a, still had the ability to keep training and that part of my game was quite advanced. And that's helped me now that I've got the air use of my hands again, right? I would also suggest that you potentially reframe what the injury means. So if you exercise a lot like I do, that takes a lot of time out of my day. It's just, it's, you know, hours of my day every day. I love it. I'm, I could choose to do something else, but I'm choosing to exercise. But what does that mean for if I get, a, if I get injured and I can't exercise that much? It means that I actually get access to more hours of my day. So rather than looking at it like what I can't do anymore, I'll try to reframe it in my mind and go, well, what can I do now? What do I get to do now? So once again, for me, back to the martial arts examples, there's a bunch of videos and DVDs and instructionals that I just don't have the time to make through. I just, I just don't have the time to sit there and watch them. But if I was to get injured, that's something that I could do with my time, right? Let's say I broke, broke my arm completely and I just couldn't be on the mat. I would get an exercise bike, I would get my laptop and I'd watch the videos while I'm moving my legs. So I'm still engaging with the martial art and I'm still doing some sort of exercise. So like what I would suggest that you do is prehab. So you have less risk of injury. Keep trying to train through it in some different sense. So train other things, keep the exercise moving and use an excuse to see what you can do. What can I do now? And the other thing I would suggest is, is get yourself a competent psychologist or a psychiatrist or a therapist or support group, someone that you can talk to that has been there that gets it. And I'll suggest that you get this now before you're injured, right? Because if you wait until you are desperate for that sort of support, there's a lot of processes in terms of it takes time to find a new therapist, to build up trust for them, to know your backstory, to be able to help you. It's not like you can just see a new person and be like, yeah, you know, like they're, they're going to help you as much as they would after years. It's a relationship. So I'll strongly suggest that prior to needing the support, you get the support, okay? And if you know you've got pre-existing conditions or any of that sort of stuff, get the relationship with the doctors or the physiotherapists or the experts now before you need it. So we're talking prevention, we're looking at alternate solutions, and we're talking about mental state, i.e. get yourself a therapist. The final thing I would suggest would be to, as always, and I suggest this all the time, is practice meditation. Meditation helps you detach and step back and sort of not hold on to mental constructs as much. There's, there's a real fear that, there's a real issue or a fear that when you get injured, your life's over. Because if you're like me, a lot of your sort of personality and your life and your routine and all of that sort of stuff is built around your ability to exercise. 
when you meditate and detach, you step back, you can actually look at that whole construct and sort of be a bit separate from it. And you can see that you're actually over here. This is just one part and that's okay. What you find is, is that the fear of not being able to do something, the, the mental ruminations about the injury are often worse than the actual impact of the injury itself. This is a hard concept to sort of explain, but it's like, it's like being alone. Being alone or lonely is actually okay. It's the fear that that's going to last forever. It's the fear that you're, if you're in pain, the pain's going to keep going. If you sit and focus on what do I feel right now in this moment, that's reality. The issue comes when you think I'm going to feel this bad feeling ongoing. So you may be injured already. You might be watching this because you're injured. Step back, realize it's not going to last forever. There are other options that you can do and that it is going to be okay, but you can take steps to help yourself. Yeah. If you need specific advice, comment below and I'll be able to talk you through some of the things that I've done that might be more specific for your case, i.e. I train this sport, I've got this injury, this is my life circumstances, help. Yeah, comment below. And if you like these videos, please like, share and subscribe. I'm going to release another bit of knowledge video every day. So this is the bit of knowledge. I am the bit of knowledge. Cheers.